Hi friends, today I'm on a rather impromptu, who are you? Hi friends. <laughs> the, the goal was I was gonna say it and then I was gonna pan over and you were gonna be there. I really but you were just Sorry. eager, man. And no, I like it. This is how you get things done in life. You have to be eager, I'm you have to be- schedule. We're on an impromptu photo walk today and I have my friend Robbie here. You guys may re remember him from a few videos ago. We're gonna wander around. We have like two hours. We don't know exactly what's gonna happen. It's very spontaneous even though we've sort of been planning it, but the actual logistics of what we're gonna do, we have no idea. So let's wander, shall we? We came to a coffee shop and didn't get coffee. It feels quite strange. It's all good, we'll get it later. Robbie and I, me and Robbie, have come to our first spot. This is the only spot I had in mind, which is this train yard. It's a rather industrial type area. I anticipated it being interesting, but it's actually very interesting. There are lots of random things going about. How do you feel about this spot, Robbie? Does it make your heart happy? Yes and no, because it's gross, but it's also really cool. So. Oh, I see, I see. I like, there's lots of geometric angles and interesting textures and things flying You're around. hardcore street photography guy, this is your jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there needs to be some more people, but definitely good backgrounds for sure. We should just train hop and go to Wyoming. That's the, that's the motion, that's how you get on a train. I'm not much of a fan of bees, but this is quite interesting. They've created a beehive. I wonder if they get their honey for the restaurant from the beehive. I wonder if they have bee soup. Do you think they have bee soup and that's why they have the bees? Bee soup would be nasty. I suppose they're building one of those tiny homes. It's a plywood tiny home? Yeah. You can walk back and forth. You don't need three dimensionality in life. It's a new trend, man. It's the... It's one the, dimensional living. Yeah. It's, it's called the side scroller. <laughs> right? While we're walking towards our destination and sounds are slowly getting louder and ruining the video, who's, a, who's an interesting creator that you follow very closely? The one that I would want to talk about right now because I've been super interested in this stuff, but I haven't been following really closely lately, is Will Derbyshire. Oh, you follow him? I don't. He's a British creator and he's doing... Derbyshire. Yeah. I really like the way he does videos. It's a lot different than how everyone else does. Okay. They're really, really good. Super like chill, low key, like really personal, pretty that, cinematic. That's one thing that I think we share is we both have a, an affinity for these more moody, laid-back yeah. videos in a world of very energetic. He's inspired me so much that I've stopped making videos for a minute to figure out what I'm gonna do. <laughs> That's good. That's the right kind of inspiration. The factory is so cool. It's like abandoned and you're not allowed to go in, which is a huge bummer because the inside looks so sick. I don't know if it's still running or not, but look how like look at all the freaking trees growing on the side. Yeah. When you go down there more, you'll see like you can see inside that big building. Robbie has a thing for showing me places around Salt Lake City that I should have seen before, but I've never come across. How long have you been here? You don't let me down. How long have you lived here? Uh, about two years now. I didn't come over here until last year for four years. Maybe a little over. Really? There's so many places to find around here. That's, that's one of the interesting things about Salt Lake City. And you have this interesting dynamic between maybe industrial areas like this, uh, urban areas, nicer urban areas. Then you have these mountains in the background for a nice backdrop. A nice juxtaposition that you won't even get in a place like New York City.
That's how I opened my door. Nice. Yeah. A little, uh, a little extra, whatever. Get comf. Get comf, as the youth say. <laughs> so after what feels like five minutes, we're back where we started. Seriously. It's nice that we got together, even though it was a short connection. Kind of a little impromptu shoot. Yeah. What is one of the more interesting places that you've that you've created in. I say this because I know that you lived in Europe for a while, correct? Yes. You've, you've, you've traveled. I'm well traveled. Which is a good thing to be. Yep. Makes you a, a better, more well-informed, well-rounded human, human being. What is one of the more interesting places that you found? So there's this spot that's hugely popular. Well, I wouldn't say hugely, but kind of popular on Instagram. It's hugely, it's hugely, hugely somewhat popular. Pop okay. It's in Italy, right on the border of Austria, almost okay. to the border of Austria. It's in uh, a seg se section in Europe called South Tyrol, where they speak German and Italian. So it's, it's really sometimes they mix it in the same sentence too, which is super I, weird. I bet. Um, that's interesting. But it's a church called the Madonna della Corona. Okay. And it's, you go up to this really small, tiny town up in the mountains. There's like nothing on the way up there, just a bunch of like random Italian little villages. And you get up to this town where it is, and you're like, all right, where's this church that everyone's talking about? You can't find it. You take a trail all the way down the side of this cliff, and then when you come out, there's a church. Like 800 feet on the side of a cliff. Oh, wow. But it's, like, impossible to get a bad picture there. You just throw your camera up in the air and set the timer. Oh, my goodness. Who, who decided this is, a, this is a sound place to build a building? Just right on the edge of a cliff. Like, you have to it's... wonder what goes, through, what goes through a person's head to decide, that's where I want to build my church. Uh -huh. I'm sure everybody around him was like, hey, you know that that's actually a cliff, right? It's a crazy, they just found it. They don't know who built it. Really? Yeah. These dudes were rappelling off the side of a cliff, and they just found it. <laughs> or no, they found a statue of Mary. Okay. I think. I can't really remember now. They found a statue of Mary on the side of the cliff. They were rappelling down, found a statue of Mary, and then built that church around it. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. Like a few hundred years ago or something. Or maybe wow. it wasn't a few. I don't know. I'm the least informed person. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, you guys can Google. That's what Google's for. So if you guys, what was the what was the church called? Madonna de la Corona. If you guys have a free weekend, make your way over to Madonna <laughs> de la Corona and grab some photos. Now I'm going to break off from Robbie. It's very sad that it was so short. However, it was nice that we got to see each other for uh, some period of time. I was slowly breaking down inside. I needed my Robbie refueling. You have attachment issues, man. It's another video. It's another video. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robbie, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. We're going to get back together soon. I will, of course, link below to his things. He has some lovely, well-produced, thoughtful videos. Bye. Bye. So nice to spend some time with Robbie. Okay, now I'm in downtown proper. I'm already here. I might as well go on a photo walk. Coming off of my spectacular photo walk in New York City, I'm reminded that it is truly nice to do street photography in another city to travel, but it's also truly nice to do street photography in my own city. You want to be in it? No. <laughs> no, but you you look you have a great personality you for a video. Like you're having a great time. <laughs> So I'm in a bit of an interesting situation right now. I was taking a photo of two police officers and a woman. She had red hair. I thought they looked uh, interesting, just conversating with each other. And so now they're staring at me because uh, they noticed. The woman walked off. The two police officers are still there and they're keeping an eye on me. I think it's probably strange to them them hanging around. But this is an interesting area. So I, I might have a conversation with two police officers in a moment. Right over there.
Hi, back at the apartment. I was just looking over there. Uh, I wanted to address a question that was asked of me on Instagram. I thought it would be an interesting and valuable topic to ramble about. This is a photo asked in a comment on one of my Instagram photos by Artistic Graham. You ever, you ever see a username and wonder, how did they get that username? I feel like a lot of people probably want that username, Artistic Graham. Artistic Graham could be an alternate name for Instagram. Well, anyway, it reads, is there any tips or tricks for how you take your photos? Your style is so good, kind of like a minimalist street photo style. Well, first off, I take the last part of that comment as a compliment because I work very hard to declutter my photos and make them feel somewhat minimalistic. It's not that I try to cut out as many elements as possible in the photo. I try to thoughtfully include certain elements in the photo and organize all of those elements well, as well as make sure that there is a strong representation of a clear subject or subjects in the photo. This is done through the way I compose the photo when I am out on the street and the way that I edit the photo. Both of those are just as powerful in the end result. I'm always trying to refine my compositions and organize them better and get rid of the, the things, the habits that I do that make the photo not as good as it could be. A good example of this is how strict I am versus how strict I used to be with the way that I allow light to come into the photo. I find myself making sure that there is proper light on the face of the person in order to separate them from the background. Or if I am working against the light, that I am, I'm, I'm working them into the scene in a way that the background is not clashing with them. There's clear separation, clear organization of all the elements in the hierarchy of how they need to be represented in, in, in order of importance in the photo. I'll find myself putting tremendous importance on making sure that I get in a place where the sun is behind me and on my subject's face, for example. This doesn't always have to happen. There are exceptions to this, but it is a good guideline to follow. In other words, because of my intentionality, the way that I handle light at this point in my photographic journey is better than I have ever handled light in the past. I think the minimalist quality that you're seeing in my work is my obsession with making sure that the subject is balanced well with the scene and that the subject has the proper strength, but also that the scene plays its uh, role properly. Now this is different for every photo. In New York City, there are certain areas that are rather cluttered. There's a lot of people around. It's hard to get a bunch of people to do what you want them to do at the same time. So sometimes it's a good idea to cut those people out of the shot. However, if you find yourself in a scene that is inherently aesthetically pleasing and there's not that much clutter around, and maybe not that many people are walking back and forth, maybe just one at a time walks by, you can back up and let more of that scene and let the scene have its strength and then the subject will balance with that properly. Now when you think this way and you've practiced on those thoughts a lot, you can find yourself organizing pretty busy scenes into cohesion and beauty. But I would say practically a lot of this has to do with finding the strong points in any given scene and building the scene around them and doing that over and over and over and through frustration and turmoil maybe one day you'll take a good photo. There are many wildly exciting techniques for organizing clutter and I would love to hear some of the interesting ways that you guys do so. Please feel free to comment below. Please feel free to check out my shop. That's how you can support this channel and what I'm up to. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.